Alrighty, alrighty. Let us get started on day three. We have just acquired the Mortal Blade from completing the Senpo Temple. We are back in Ashina Castle, and we're going to go over and talk to Lord Ishin, letting him know that we got the blade. Sekiro, is that the mortal blade? So what of the rulers? According to the Divine Child of the Inner Sanctum, anyone who draws the mortal blade will meet death. Which means only one such as you can wield it then. When I drew up the blade and saw its crimson edge, I too died once. I see. The crimson edge. Listen, Sekiro. With the mortal blade, you can now kill the undying. A truly terrifying weapon, don't you think? What are you trying to say? That sword is now yours. Who or what will you kill? You must be sure of the answer before drawing it. You're leaving, Sekiro. Another time, then. So, we can talk to him. He just gives us a little bit of advice. Ooh, and then, as we leave, we can do an eavesdrop conversation. The crimson mortal blade. That means the one that he had must have been slacked then to abandon oneself in such a tragedy. He just says that somebody has a second mortal blade. We'll find out who that is much later. Now that we've done this, there's something that I was thinking of that I forgot. But not important. We will go travel to. We're going to head to the Sunken Valley. To continue the main quest. The Sunken Valley has a relatively annoying midpoint, which is called the Gunfort. So I tend to just go by. And uh, he's right here. Ah, Sekiro. Who are hmm? <laughs> Ministry rats. They find a way in through every crack and crevice. There's always more of them to kill. By the way, Sekiro. Have you mastered any secret techniques? Hmm. Hmm. Not quite yet, it seems. Cut them down, Sekiro. Every last one. So the secret technique that he's referring to is just, at the end of any skill tree, this final skill is the secret technique. And we want to get projected force. Going through the Ashina Arch Tree is the fastest one to finish. But we want to make sure that we get some of the other things. Actually, we can work on this now. Midair. That's great. Getting these medicine potency is very good. Or when you're not quite good at dodging everything. Oop. So we jump across, grapple over here to grab this item. Just an eel liver. And then we go down. And then we go down some more. You can see some branches back that way, but we'll grab this sculpture's idol first. It is a wombat actually. But same general area. And then over here we deal with some gunner. It is my companion wombat that hangs out with me every night. Oop. Wow. I 
hate edges. There we go. Try not to do that twice in a row. Over here we have a, another Gord Seed or Prayer Bead. People seem to think the Wombat was fun to have. There's the Prayer Bead. And a pacifying agent for terrify. And we just run back here. And then on to the gun fort proper. Pretty much everybody has a gun on long this way. They're not that much fun. It's one of my least favorite areas in the game, but it's not the worst. Primarily for that reason, getting shot in the air is no fun. Well, they do have that weird thing when you're too close, they just shoot over your head. Come back here. Try and grab on the ledge. Tent, we get the Gord Seed to increase our healing. Then come back down there. Go back to the main path again. Two nice items right on the way. We can go use that Gord Seed pretty quickly as there's a Sculptor's Idol. Right up, oh, there's a gecko. Right there. And there's a bunch of guys right over here. But I like to just run past them and go straight to the Sculptor's Isle. <clears throat> and then we can talk to this guy. He tells us all about the gun fort. The gun fort. It was even more formidable than we'd heard. Unprepared. It takes me back. I can hear the Senko Temple Bell. Alright. And then we just go down here. Avoid all the gunners. There's a mini-boss right here that we're going to just skip over for now. Because we've got all these guys shooting at us and we want to have the backstab death blow. So we only have to go through the one health bar. Which is much nicer. Gonna keep Do a little serpentine. So you can actually fall through this hole right there. Guy 
guy right behind us that sees us. We're gonna go past him. Nope. Gonna jump down here, because this gives us a different avenue of approach. And they'll all lose sight of us. We can do a death blow on him because he doesn't know where we are. Oops. We're gonna go ahead and. Just run past these guys. Because they're annoying. Go ahead and get the sculptor's idol. And rest real quick. to kick us. Ooh. And there's another one. So there's two here. I'm just going to go ahead and reset this. <clears throat> they actually decrease. They actually change the number depending on when you come through the game. Kill that guy. Move on. Come down here. Let that area reset itself. Fight this mini boss right here. He's really easy. Just block them. Go back away. Then he'll come forward and do a slash attack. Just jump on him. And just like that. One health bar down, reposition. Always a slash. Out back away, and we're coming for the slash. Jump on him. Oops. Very important not to go into an attack on this guy because he uh, likes to. He has very high poise and you aren't really going to break him out of it so it's best just to deflect him. Large fan is another um, another uh, shinobi tool. You can get scrap magnetite. And then we can open this with the four trying key that we got earlier. There's also some holes in the ground there that we're going to go investigate but first we're going to go back to this area now that they've reset you can hear the guy walking around so there he is gonna walk up perform the backstab on him grab some snap seeds and then we're gonna work our way through this whole fort area. Grab all those items. Now we have to be careful in this area because this pathway is littered with firecrackers. So on the ground there's all those rocks covered with Hey, those are all firecrackers. You step on them, the whole gun fort gets alerted to you. Just work your way down the mountain. You can leave that guy over there alone. He doesn't really interfere with the fight. 
But basically just trying to get rid of all the guys who like to interfere with the mini boss fight. Whoop. Don't know how I did that again. Again, because I don't want to use too many killing resources on this. Got there. The death blow will kill me a little because I have that skill. It's a very nice skill. And now with the mountain clear, we can go back to deal with that mini boss that we walked by. So when you approach from this side, you can get an easy death blow on her, which sets you up well for the fight. Just gotta be sure not to do a run. Whoop! And she does that grab and then shoots you, which deals a significant portion of health. You want to be sure to bait her into an attack. Oop. You cannot jump over that, you have to dodge to the side. I'm not doing good. Use some firecrackers. I'm going to move away. Throw some firecrackers down. some pressure into it. Oop. Okay. And a little bit of a struggle, but she's down. Once again, emphasizing the reason why I really do try and start the mini boss fights with those death blows. Because, you know, one less health bar is that important. And then down here, there's a guy and an item. So we'll go get those. <clears throat> and just like that. this front area, we can keep going. And with the front of the gun for it cleared, it makes it much more comfortable to just explore, which we've basically done. Here's the front way. Front gate, come over here, go up. Oh, 
watch my complete ability to grab ledges. And then I can... Actually, I don't want to show off the fire trackers yet because I still have this guy over here. So I'm with that, that's the last enemy. And then here's these firecrackers. What fun. We can go over here to go through this area. And now we're back here. Now that we've basically cleared out the gun fort area, no reason not to do a quick rest to get back our gourds. And we have three prayer beads. We will pick up one more relatively quickly. You see there's an area down there, but that's just a dead end from this side. We will go down the hole and go investigate. So on one side, we have some yellow gunpowder. And on the other side, we have a little bit of a area we can explore. Two ways. And we can hear some enemies. That's, and that's a dead end. But we can hear enemies on the other side of that. So we go this way. Able to stand up soon. And up here we find the path we can take to go over there. Oh, and in here we can hear all the croaking of our friendly geckos. I like to just deal with them with shurikens. There's a couple more right up here. You can grab some Divine Confetti, which is a weapon damage buff that you can use. Gives you a temporary weapon damage buff. Okay, and then from here, we're going to go back over here. And then go around here. Down here we have some geckos that we want to take out first. And then we have more centipedes that we can... Oh, that's right. We just jump over and kill them again. Just like we did in Senpo Temple. Easy way to deal with them. A little damage, it's just going to keep healed. And there's my fourth prayer bead and contact medicine, which applies a light poison to you, but prevents you from being able to take a heavier poison damage. Uh, it has its use, but it, uh, I don't really use it. Somebody does. Right, then we can come back here. Grapple to this. And grab this item. And then that is what I looked at at the beginning of the loop. And now we can go back to our statue and enhance our physical attributes again, which gives us even more health. And we keep on going down here. Jump over the pit this time. And as we cross this bridge, we're going to meet our old friend who's here to visit us again. And here he comes, breaking the bridge on us. So immediately you swim to the right, and there's this little hollowed out area. Oh, then you got to wait.
Remember, he stabbed his eye, so he can't see from this side. So you go to this side. You can't see it very well. Then he just slams in there because he likes to slam in on you. And now that we've gotten here, we'll actually go. Uh, probably, she's probably in Kuro's room. To go get our Gord Seed upgrade. Just go over here. Give her the gourd seed. It seems the sculptor's dragon rod has been cured. Oh, right. Yes. Please give this to him. What is it? It's his favorite tea. I thought it would be a fitting way to celebrate his return to health. I'm glad you've come, Master. Give her the gourd seed. Goodbye. Then we've actually got quite a bit of sun, so we will go visit our friend the sculptor to see what upgrades we can get. There's a few pretty nice ones. And we did get that other tool, so we can give that to him as well. I brought tea. <laughs> did you know? Quite the busy body, aren't you? Grab the fine abduction. Then upgrade our prosthetic tool. We want to get the flame for sure. The fine abduction because it has a pretty Ooh. I guess I used a lot of the metal. Scrap iron. That's fine. You can actually go buy some. Go buy four scrap iron so you can get the uh, 